Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Culture Center. Once again, I have to say I'm glad to be in your presence. I'm glad you took a moment to listen to and view me in the teaching the, the kingdom concept. Now, we're going to, I want you to um, turn to Matthew, the 13th chapter. All of you there who are watching. And um, I'm going to talk on what the king said in terms of what the kingdom's like. So you will get more. I'm, I'm focusing more on the concept and then the message. Because many of you don't get the concept. If you don't have the concept, you will have a difficult time understanding the message. And um, if you don't mind me saying, some of you take the time to study what the kingdom is. Go to the website. I have all the information on the website. And this is something that you should know. Remember what I've always said. And I'm only repeating what my king says. So it's not new. It's exactly what he says. What did he say? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away by no means. Okay, let us read. And I'm going to have time for, um, it's going to be like I'm reading through certain verses concerning the kingdom. And i like you to remember what Jesus said. This is what the kingdom is like. Let us read. Uh, 13th chapter. And I'm starting with the third verse. Then he spoke many things to them in parables. Uh, this is because many of the people, um, if they were hungry for the word and hungry to know it, the king would reveal it to them. Excuse me. Seems like I'm a little tired, but I'm probably not, didn't get a little nap today. And those naps are very important when you get my age. Behold, a soul went out to sow. And as he spoke, and as he sowed, some of the seeds fell on by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked them. But the others fell on good ground and yield a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And he who hit, and he, he, who has an ear, let him hear. In other words, pay attention. If you have a mind, if you're hungry for the word, pay attention. Listen. Because this here is a category of certain individuals. For example, when Jesus spoke about this, and this is all dealing with kingdom, and I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis of what some fell on stony ground. Depending on where your environment is, how you focus. I want you to meditate on that because I'm going to go on. I don't want to pause on that too long because I only have about 20 minutes or so in this session and I want to read to you. And Jesus answered and said to them, and the, excuse me, the 10th verse, the 13th chapter. And the disciples came to him came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parable? Now, he, he explains it to them. Listen, and he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know 
the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to those it has not been given. Now, what does that imply? That imply that there's people that he uh, already chosen. Well, that's true. Those of you who are embracing the kingdom, it's been chosen for you. God's been giving. The Holy Spirit have led you to this point. Now, you would say, uh, in the natural world, in this world, you would say, well, God is partial. You don't know who the people are, the individuals are, who God have given that talent. And there's a reason for it. Some people just don't want to hear about the kingdom. Some people just hung up on their religious organizations or the, the, the uh, uh, religious denominations. It's very important to know that the kingdom is not that religion that you may be affiliated with. It's the government of God. And everything that the king did, the Lord Jesus did when he was down here, he was giving you example of what the kingdom of heaven was like. Let us read. And we go on. And he speaks about this. He, he explained to them what the kingdom of heaven, why he allowed it to speak in parables to them. And listen, now, here's something that I want you to understand and I want you to really focus on. The 18th verse, he says, Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, 19th verse, I love this part. Follow it. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatch away what was sown in his heart. Now Jesus is giving the, the explanation. He's explained it to him. Follow me. He says, again, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. In other words, the devil come personally because he doesn't want you to embrace the concept and then the message of the kingdom government. So he's going to do everything in his possible power. You see, the devil's already condemned. He's already doomed. His destiny is already written in stone. So he's going to do everything he can to bring everybody that is available to him to go into eternal damnation. Now listen. See, that's why I, I, I talk when I, when I speak about the kingdom, when I speak about the word. The word of God is eternal. It's eternal. Anything else in this world Anything else in this world is temporary, but the word of God is eternal. Houses, land, people, money, diamonds, all these things are temporary. They have no value unless we set a value on them. But the kingdom, the word, the word is eternal. That's why I emphasize it so much. Do you know when you say righteousness is God's righteousness? That's God's word. That's his word. You see, we have to get to, to embrace that word. That's why I speak about it so much on the word of God. We have to learn to embrace the word. The Lord God's constitution. He left it here for us. Man calls it the Bible, but no such animal. It's his constitution to all mankind. Just like we have a constitution in this country, United States, they change it, they, they, they change it, they uh, uh, apply to it their lives what they want. But you can't do that in the kingdom of God. The king's word is law. It's not going to change. Whenever God speak it, it's in his word, it's law. Now let us go on. The 20th verse, and he who, and he who receives the seed on stony ground, in stony places, this is he who, fe who hears the word and immediately 
receives it with joy. You get happy. You got it. The minute you hear about the kingdom. But here's what happened. Listen. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Because of the word, he immediately he stumbles. You get happy. But when trouble comes, you get problems in your, in, in your home, problems in your job. Somebody, you get mugged in the religious institution that you attend. Something goes wrong. Your wife leave you. Your husband leave you. Your wife commit adultery. Your husband commit adultery. Your children start smoking, drinking, getting high, become disobedient, become very rebellious. Then you look for the natural explanation. Why did this happen or this and that? You lose your best friend. Your friend talks about you. I've had all these things happen to me, but I embrace God's word. I've had all these things that I've just said, um, the majority of them, not so much with the kids. My daughters watch me. They focus on me. They was telling me just today. The reason they look around and look for men, but there's no more real men out there. They call me old school by the way I dress. How do I dress? I dress not according to the world system. Most people think I'm dressed up. I'm not. It's just how I'm dressed. I have an image in my mind of how I am to perceive, to be perceived, how I perceive within myself. So I walk and conduct myself. I'm a kingdom citizen. I'm an ambassador. I'm a man with principles and morals and integrity. And I dress and I conduct myself in such a manner. These are all kingdom principles. In this book, God's Constitution, once again, I'm going to mention it. Many call it the Bible, but it's God's constitution to all mankind. You're supposed to live by it. Once you are saved, once your spirit is born again, you have to be taught how to live the kingdom life. One thing I must say about a lot of religious institutions, they have God's Constitution. They call it the Bible, but they have got constitution. And many strive to, live, strive to live by it under the auspices of the name Christian. But they're citizens. Once you, once you know who you are, you can walk boldly and speak boldly. Once you know who you are. But many of you, many of us don't know who we are. You do what you, what the world, you follow the world system, you get involved in a lot of things that, that without trusting the Lord. And, and I was talking to my daughter, one of my daughters today, and I was telling her how when you live a life that's based upon God's word and keep practicing, it will change your life. Now listen. The 24th verse of the 13th chapter, another parable, and he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sows good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tad among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprout and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, do you not so didn't do we not sow good seed and in your field? How then does it have tares? In other words, it's like 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 weeds. Now here's the thing. He says the kingdom of heaven is like. And as I speak to you at this very moment, the spirits, the, the demonic forces are working. They're going to work on you just like they work on me. You know, I'm going to share this with you. You know, every time, every Wednesday, or every time I'm getting to, to, to have a, a session, two sessions, before my son 
comes here. That whole day is a challenge for me. It seems like the devil unleashes all his demons that day. Today I had a challenge. But you keep in mind, the kingdom of heaven is like when you, when, when you, when you hear that word. Don't think that you're going to have a good day and it's going to be, I'm here again. No, you're going to be challenged. That's why Jesus made the statement, seek first. The kingdom, I'm going to help you out here. I want you to follow me real closely. He says in Matthew 6 and 33, seek first. That's a priority. The kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. His righteousness is his word. Do I have to reiterate that? I will. His righteousness is his word. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And he says, all things shall be added unto you. Now, prior to that, if you look at the 25th verse of the same chapter, 6th chapter, you'll find what he talks about. Your clothing, how you dress, your food. You don't have to sweat the small stuff. See, a king will take care of his children. He will take care of his citizens. You won't have to sweat nothing, water, food. You have, but you can't see Christians. They they sweat a lot of stuff. I've heard even a man that I admire said, "You can command God to do this and that. You can't command no king. You suppose a servant worshiper, and in the kingdom, you only have one obligation, and that's to the king." To his word. When he puts his word down, his word is law. And you should live by his word. I, I've learned not to sweat the small stuff when I'm going through stuff. I've learned to trust in his word. He'll so he'll bring me through. And when I find things coming at me, right and left and spiritual, and, and it seems like everything happens. People blow your horn. They get upset with you in the car. You walk out there. And I realize that, hey, I'm determined to go. It ain't going to be easy, but you have to be determined. You have to have that mindset that you're going to achieve, live according to his word. That's one thing I like about one uh, individual, uh, Michael Jordan. He's focused. He had the mindset. It was about winning. He didn't let nothing deter him. He didn't get caught up in politics. He didn't get caught up in certain movements. They call black movement. He didn't get, he was focused. When he went out on the, one, in one of his games, he was sick, but he was focused. And he won the game. They won the game. In the kingdom, you have to be focused on God's word. Why? You have to trust his word. Believe in his word. That's what the kingdom is like. You're going to go through. Here, here's another one. Listen. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Check this out. Which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is an, at least of all the seeds. It's the small seed of the, the, the small seed of all the seeds. Check it out. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herb and becomes a tree. Now, I want you to understand this. He says, again, the kingdom of God. You start off small. God wants to deal with you. It grows. It gathers all the nutrients, the nutrients, to be a tree. So many preachers, so many evangelists, they want this and that, and they're calling kingdom. Many don't know, I'm sad to say, many don't know what the kingdom is. But you have to, uh, 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 the kingdom doesn't seek to be known. It just, do, it just a mustard seed just grows. And as it grows, Birds and everything else come and land in it. Why? Because it has the support system. Birds can land in it. 
It has a support system. Once you embrace the kingdom, I only have a few minutes now, a few seconds here, but once you embrace the kingdom, that concept, stay and go to the website. Once you embrace that concept, you can embrace the message. The message. Now, we're going to talk about this in the next session, but I want you to get it, so I'm not going to deviate from this. Until next time, remember what I say, your greatest asset is your faith in the Word of God.